in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, author of peace and lover of charity, who adorned St. Elizabeth of Portugal with a marvelous grace for reconciling those in conflict, grant through her intercession that we may be peacemakers and so be called children of God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. Amaziah, the priest of Bethel, sent the word to Jeroboam, king of Israel. Amos has conspired against you here within Israel. The country cannot endure all his words. For this is what Amos says, Jeroboam shall die by the sword, and Israel shall surely be exiled from its land. To Amos, Amaziah said, Off with you, visionary, flee to the land of Judah. There, earn your bread by prophesying, but never again prophesy in Bethel. For it is the king's sanctuary and a royal temple. Amos answered Amaziah, I was no prophet, nor have I belonged to a company of prophets. I was a shepherd and a dresser of sycamores. The Lord took me from following the flock and said to me, Go, prophesy to my people Israel. Now hear the word of the Lord. You say, prophesy not against Israel. Preach not against the house of Isaac. Now thus says the Lord, Your wife shall be made a harlot in the city and your sons and daughters shall fall by the sword. Your land shall be divided by measuring line, and you yourself shall die in an unclean land. Israel shall be exiled far from its land. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold, 
sweeter also than syrup or honey from the comb. The judgments of the Lord are true, and all of them are just. Please all stand. Alleluia, alleluia. God was reconciling the world <clears throat> to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. After entering a boat, Jesus made a crossing and came into his own town. And there, people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Courage, child, your sins are forgiven. At that, some of the scribes said to themselves, This man is blaspheming. Jesus knew what they were thinking and said, Why do you harbor evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise and walk? But that you may know, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He then said to the paralytic, Rise, pick up your stretcher, and go home. He rose and went home. When the crowds saw this, they were struck with awe and glorified God who had given such authority to men. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. And the gospel tells us, people brought to him a paralytic lying on a stretcher. The paralytic, obviously, could not make his way, could not make his own way to Jesus. And so, the people carried him so that he could come closer to the Lord. Often enough, we presume that the men who carried this paralytic to the Lord were his friends. But that is a presumption. We really do not know if they were his friends. Early this morning, I had to go through the three Gospels of Luke and Mark and Matthew just to check if the ingidman kita nakakuha sang impression that the men who carried this paralytic to Jesus were his friends. And in the three Gospels, they do not mention, not a single mention, that the men who carried the paralytic to Jesus were his friends. No mention. The only information that they give us is that some men, or in the words of today's Gospel, people brought the paralytic to Jesus. They may have been his friends, but they may also have been random strangers trying to help him. Whoever they were, what they did was an act of love, of care, and compassion. But what makes it interesting, as I was reflecting this morning, is that sometimes kindness and compassion and care, these things, we limit them to our friends. Though kung hindi ka friend, hindi ka buligan. But the gospel today clearly tells us people not necessarily friends, are also capable of showing kindness to others. My brothers and sisters, there are times in our lives when we all suffer from some sort of paralysis. In a manner of speaking, life situations, experiences, problems, all this can paralyze us so that we also need to be carried by others. Yes, it may not be the physical kind of paralysis. We may still be able to go where we want to go and do things on our own. But the fact is that there are instances in life when we need the support of others. 
when we go through our rough and tough times, what can help us keep going is the presence, the support, and the encouragement of others. Many of them are our friends. Some of them may be strangers. Aside from our relatives and our close friends, there will also be random individuals who will come and become part of the stories of our, of our lives, trying to help us continue going on even if life is tough. On the other hand, there are also times in our lives when we might find ourselves in the role of the people who support the paralytic. We find ourselves in a position of being able to support someone who needs our encouragement at some point and we help them carry their burden until they can finally be on their own. In other words, my dear friends, there are times when we need the faith of others to carry us because our own faith is weak. But there are also moments in our own life when we help carry the burden of others because their faith is weak at some point. This is the Christian message. This is how the Lord wants it to be. When you come to think of it, this is how Christian discipleship and Christian spirituality began. This is also how our discipleship must continue. And how did it begin? The faith that we have now was carried by our parents. Our parents carried us to the baptismal font. Our parents carried us to the church where we received the faith. The faith of others, in other words, help us so that we can be carried to the Lord. We were initially brought to the Lord by the faith of others. And as we grow older, and hopefully as we mature in the faith, the Lord will also call us to bring others to the Lord by our faith. In the course of our lives, we will find ourselves still needing the faith of others to keep our own relationship with the Lord alive. In other words, we are always interdependent when it comes to our relationship with God. As I grow in faith towards the Lord, I help others to do so as well. And if I grow away from the Lord, I make it more difficult for others to grow towards Him. So that in a very profound sense, we depend on each other's faith on this pilgrimage of life. In that sense, our own relationship with the Lord or the lack of it is personal. And this is where our Catholic faith becomes so different from the faith of our non-Catholic brothers and sisters. You may have heard some people say, have you received the Lord as your personal God and Savior? Today, we are reminded, yes, faith is personal, but faith is never private. It is personal. It will be between me and my God, but it is never private. The proof of our faith is when we begin to share this to others. We pray that as we grow in our personal encounter with God, we may also grow in helping others come closer to the Lord. Amen. We stand for the prayers of the faithful. In Capernaum, among the sick who came to Jesus for healing, was a paralytic brought to him on a stretcher. Jesus healed him of sickness that paralyzed his body and released him from sin that imprisoned his soul. Let us ask the Lord for healing of both body and soul as we all say, loving God, have mercy on the sick. Loving God, have mercy on the sick. May the church make those who are suffering feel the presence of Christ who consoles and cares for the sick, heals every hurt, 
and liberates from sin through his forgiveness, we pray. Loving God, have mercy on the sick. May hospital administrators, chaplains, and families of the sick attend to the spiritual needs of the sick that they may trust in the Lord and experience peace, we pray. Loving God, have mercy on the sick. May the sick and the disabled, the lonely and the depressed, and those who bear the burden of sin hear the liberating words of Christ, Rise and go home, we pray. Loving God, have mercy on the sick. May the burden of sickness and age carried by the sick and the elderly be made lighter by the love of their family and their attendants, we pray. Loving God, have mercy on the sick. May those who work in hospitals attending to the sick lying on stretchers be protected from contamination, appreciated for their labors, and afforded financial security, we pray. Loving God, have mercy on the sick. Let us bow our heads as we pray in silence for the intentions of this Mass and for our personal needs. For them, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, have mercy on the sick. Almighty God, your salvation is marked by deliverance from sickness and whatever oppresses human beings. Help us to attend to the sick and the disabled so that freed from encumbrance of body and spirit, your children will turn to you in joy and thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. May the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite hearts, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May these offerings of our service, placed on your altar in commemoration of Blessed Elizabeth of Portugal, be acceptable to you, O Lord, we pray, and grant that released from earthly attachments, we may have our riches in you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Let Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just 
our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in the crowning, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support, so that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels, with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricia, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily, daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, who trespass against, against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. You take away the Amazing. sins of the world and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments. Never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. The body of Christ.
Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we who are fortified by the power of this sacrament may learn to the example of Blessed Elizabeth of Portugal to seek you always above all things and to bear in this world the likeness of the new man through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.